What do you want to do today? Um, Got anything in mind? I had a few things in mind. In mind, in mind, in mind. Let's uh, warm up. Let's warm up. Science of warming up. For deadlifting. Honestly, like five years ago when I started functional bodybuilding, I was posting videos of me. I had just retired from CrossFit and I'm like doing bodybuilding stuff. They're like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like a CrossFitter is doing bicep curls and it's okay. And I'm like, yes, it's okay. It's okay to do it. Not only is it like supportive of this, mm-hmm. like you don't, it's not, I'm just doing bodybuilding now. Yeah. It's all part of the same universe. It's really okay. <laughs> so we'll do this movement, combine superset with the, the deficit trap bar deadlift. We're gonna be working on one bar and um, we're gonna incorporate sleds into like a conditioning piece which has got other movements, but we'll do, um, for now, when, when it comes to doing these sets, I'd want that set to take somewhere between 45 seconds to 55 seconds for just that arm. So we're gonna get about 90 seconds of time under tension on the press, and then go over there and we're gonna deadlift for a minute straight. So keep the tempo, you know, slow. Three down and a three concentric. Mm. And it's gonna smoke that grip. I mean, one of the big things I noticed in CrossFit is there's a lot of pacing. If you go, if you just go too hard at those, like if you're doing those pull-ups or something, you go too hard and blow yeah. your load too quick, you're messed up. You're yeah. not gonna have the endurance to continue on. So yeah. this is gonna be a yeah. test. So slowing things down with like tempo resistance training teaches people a little bit easier, like motor, motor control, mind muscle connection. Yeah. That alone is gonna protect people from their own mental worst enemy, which is like, oh, I think I can lift the universe today. And they go in with sloppy technique mm-hmm. and they hurt themselves. It's like, how good was that for the long game? So I was looking at your breathing. And you're going, you're going in like a three breaths yeah. know, multiple times. So why, like how, like how do you control your breathing when you do that? You have to breathe while you're moving and breathing while moving is gonna look different for each person. You kind of figure out your cadence. So for this one, I was just breathing every second and I'm counting in my head, one, two, three, one. So I'm breathing. You have to have an extra concentration on staying tight too. But I think sometimes you're used to getting a big breath and then yeah. staying tight right yeah and i think people are conditioned to that because they they're trying to lift as heavy as they can because breathing happens in your lungs bracing happens in your your, your midsection yeah. you don't need to like clamp down your chest it's like you can hold a tight midline yeah. and take effective breaths mm-hmm. So this one could be like two seconds down, two seconds up. And when you switch arms, you'll see that your other arm is pretty fatigued from holding that rack. Yeah. So it's important on each set to switch which arm you're using first. And so with kettlebells, like the thing I love to teach is What I know about the kettlebell rack position, Mm because this is so commonly misunderstood, it's like people have this broken wrist, uh, common fault. They put a lot of the stress back here, as opposed to keeping wrist straight and somewhat flexed, which for some people hurts as they push their wrist into the bell, but you know, a straight wrist is really important. Elbow down, forearm to chest. So thumb is basically pointed right at your sternum. And that's like, that's ideal. Anything that takes you into this, this, or elevated shoulder trap, oh, you know, upper trap working too hard, just gets people into problems. Yeah, white reds, 
Put them over here. So it's three, a three, three movement, uh, let's call it like a triplet um, conditioning workout where we're gonna work against the clock, trying to complete the work as fast as we can with good quality. But to ensure that we don't get going too fast where we lose form, we pick exercises specifically that will slow you down just by the nature of how you have to get in and out of them, maybe by the load that's chosen, or maybe just by the cadence of it. So the movements that we selected today are a dumbbell floor press, which we'll do from 10 repetitions down to one repetition in increments of one. We'll then move to a, a kettlebell swing, a classic you know, Russian kettlebell swing, just to shoulder height, um, which then pairs well with the sled drag, which we're doing in a position that's gonna really uh, light up the hamstrings and the posterior chain. So it's floor press, swing, sled, and we'll just complete 10 rounds. But the reps on these get lower and lower as we go. Y'all game? Perfect. Let's rock and roll. Off the top. Want something? They fucking love this because it tests your breathing a lot. Through yeah. load, especially the ones we were doing before. Yeah. I was getting so smoked. You know, just think about the the audience that's gonna be participating. Like, hey, if you if your best asset, one of your best assets as a as an athlete is your strength, then leverage it inside of these conditioning workouts so that you can get good cardiovascular work capacity, but use things that you're really confident with to, to elevate and develop intensity. If somebody's doing my program, sees this workout, and we've taught them enough, they get onto round six, so like, hey, I'm gonna go grab a heavier dumbbell. Hey, I'm gonna throw another plate on. Hey, let me try that other kettlebell. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not just like lifting something too light and being like, well, this is what I was told to do and it didn't feel like a good workout. It's mm -hmm. like, well, that's, that's on you partly. You know, or they're lifting too heavy, like, this, this hurt my back. It's like, why didn't you lighten up the load at like, rep three instead of rep 57 when you were smoked mm -hmm. you know and that's because of just following as opposed to being like an active participant in the process of of their fitness journey so we just got done with a functional bodybuilding workout i put these two gentlemen through um what i would consider sort of like the foundations or the pillars of functional bodybuilding we like to implement time under tension which is longer sets uh slower tempos with our resistance training we did a work capacity uh, or uh, what I call the functional pump conditioning. It is a play on mixed modal conditioning or Metcons that people have been exposed to. Um, and we do it in such a way where we keep the intensity somewhat controlled through how we pick the exercises, the way we set up the repetition schemes. And we talked about it at the end, when you have things that you're really good at inside of our training system, you wanna leverage those to build intensity. Uh, so. I expect everybody to have something in our system that they're confident and they can really excel at and things that they're going to be challenged by. And I think it's the combination of both. Hey, I'm good at this. This makes me feel good. Oh man, I'm not so good at this. That inspires me to try and get better. That's what we're after. And I think we accomplished that today. You can follow me at Marcus Philly on Instagram and Marcus Philly on YouTube. And then my company is Functional Bodybuilding. If you go to functional-bodybuilding.com, you can see what we're offering and uh, and get on our email list where I get to write to everybody every single week and share a lot of free content, a lot of training, nutrition, and how to stay in this game for a long time and ideally look good and move well into your later life.